The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good day. Welcome to today's Reach Plus Alert webinar, Using Beacons and Indoor Alerts to Enhance Emergency Communication. I'm Michael Hackmer, and I'll be moderating today's event, and we're very pleased on behalf of Reach Plus, uh, very pleased to have you with us today. A couple of housekeeping items before we kick into the presentation. Uh, you have two choices to listen to today's event. You can either dial in and enter an access code, or you can listen to the event on your computer simply by toggling through on your GoToWebinar control panel. My only recommendation is that you, you choose one and, and stick with it because what could end up happening is you could end up disconnecting your audio and have to redial back in or, or re-log back in. So uh, just to make sure that you have consistency, choose one and, and try to stick with it through the course of the event. We are going to be taking uh, questions and having a brief question and answer session at the end. Uh, to ask questions, use your GoToWebinar control panel. You should see it up on the upper right hand. Typically, it's on the upper right hand of the screen. And we're not going to answer the questions as we go through the event. We're just going to take care of everything at the end. If for whatever reason we don't get to your specific question today, we are, uh, we are recording all the questions that come in. So we'll respond to you directly via email and a phone call, uh, typically within about 24 hours or so after the event has ended. Uh, lastly, we are recording the audio and video portion of this, and we will make the slides available. So if for whatever reason you have to step away or um, you know miss something, we are going to be able to send this information to you so you'll get both the slide deck and a link to the video file that you can view at your, at your leisure. So again, really appreciate you joining us today. And now let's get to the meat and substance of our presentation. So a quick overview of our agenda. Today we're going to quickly go over the company background and solutions uh, for Reach Plus. And uh, Abdul Monam, who's the director of sales for Reach Plus, is, is going to cover the company background just so that you get an idea of what Reach Plus and New Access is all about. Then I'm going to discuss trends in mobile, uh, specifically how mobile is being used in the workforce and in schools. What are some of the trends that we're seeing there in terms of use? Um, in terms of bring your own device into work and, and those kinds of things. Then I'm going to touch very briefly on the key challenges that we're seeing in not just emergency communication, although that's really the emphasis, but just in sort of communication uh, in sort of a broad sense as well. Then Monam's going to pick up and talk about beacon technology and what beacons are all about and how that ties into emergency learning and communicating through mobile devices. Uh, as you may or may not know, beacons are small devices that are, are in rooms in specific locations that allow you to target mobile devices within that location. It's a great technology. It's a technology that Apple and Google and others are starting to experiment with, but it's something that Reach Plus has really uh, gotten behind for communication, so we're very excited about that. We're then going to conclude and sum up things and then take your questions. On the whole, we don't think the webinar is going to take uh, a terribly long time, and we're really excited to have you with us. So without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Abdul Monam, who's going to talk about the company. And Monam, take it away. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Mike. And thank you very much uh, to everyone who's joined us uh, for this webinar. Um, Reach Plus Alerts uh, is, is a product of New Access Innovations. Uh, this product is developed in-house by New Access Innovations. Uh, we're based out of the DC metropolitan area. Uh, and we've been catering to the mass notification market, uh, you know, for about roughly about 10 odd years now, uh, with a number of customers across both the public and commercial sectors. Um, the Reach Plus team um, has delivered a range of products uh, over the years for customers, uh, with, with solutions ranging from IP-based alerting uh, to Active Directory alerts to geographic alerting. Uh, you know, with the ability to deliver alerts to desktops and mobile devices through a variety of methods, uh, such as such as push messaging, SMS, and email. Um, next slide, please, uh, Mike. Mike, next slide, please. Yeah, thanks. Um, so, what makes Reach Plus Alerts the ideal solution uh, for communicating 
time sensitive information. You know, in, in times when you've got an emergency or there's an important announcement you need to make, uh, you know, whatever the type of event or disruption, uh, you know, where, you, you know, an organization feels that the communication needs to be rapid and, and you know, really, uh, you know, hitting the target and getting, to, get in touch, getting in touch with the people at the right time. So a couple of key features, uh, you know, that, that Synergy, Reach Plus Alert Synergy has. Using Synergy, you can send alerts to any number of recipients. Now, this can be a small group of people, five, ten people. Or, or your whole employee base, you know, uh, and and this can be, these notifications could be sent on a number of devices, such as your desktop, smartphones, tablets, and and you know, for those people in your organization who may not have smartphones, you can send out an SMS or an email for those you know who are, who are more you know who would like to basically just look at their emails uh, when when they receive something. So we basically aim to cover all the typical devices that may be in an organization's environments use. Uh, then secondly, you can send target alerts uh, by not only importing the groups uh, or, or use or users that are within your organization's AD, but also giving you the flexibility uh, of, of creating your own groups based on the users that are in your AD and then sending out alerts to just them. So this is really beneficial when you've got a group of people uh, that belong to various departments, for example, uh, let's say you've got a core emergency team, but they don't belong to one specific department. You can create that team by adding them to a group uh, in, in, Reach Plus, in, in the Reach Plus Alerts operation interface. Again, allowing you to communicate, sending out targeted messaging. Um, we have a concept of, of, of Rich Alerts, where the alert has a lot of depth in the content it provides. Now, this depth is provided by the audio and, and visual elements of a notification. And then, you know, in, 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 in studies that have been carried out with regards to how people or how quickly people respond uh, to, to a notification, is that if you send out something that's only text, it's going to take the people about, what, 30 seconds uh, to respond to it. Uh, but if you add an audio or a visual aspect uh, to that notification, that response time comes down to 10 seconds. And, you know, those 20 seconds can make a lot of difference. Uh, especially when it's an emergency. Um, and then you can also have users acknowledge alerts upon receiving them. You know, this allows for you to account for everyone uh, and, and be sure that they're safe. And then, you know, in the event that users do not acknowledge or, or they respond back to you with a specific response saying that they need help, you can then take necessary action out of the application in, in order to better manage the situation. Okay. Uh, Mike, next slide, please. Fantastic. So what you see over here is what the console or the operational interface of Reach Plus Alerts looks like. Uh, this is what you use to manage uh, and send out alerts, configure the system based on your organization's needs. Uh, it is laid out in a format, you know, to enhance user experience through ease of use. Uh, you know, when you try, when you download your trial version of the product from a website, you'll see, you know, I like to give an example to people that, you know, our product is the same as using Outlook. It's laid out on a format that you can recognize instantaneously, and it's so easy that you get started and start using it immediately. Uh, you know, for example, one of the areas you see is, is the fast, faster ready alert section. So this is where you've, you, you display alerts that you've created that you can then send out whenever you need to. Uh, you know, eliminating uh, the, the need to go ahead and start creating alert whenever there's an event. You know, it's, you've defined the events that could possibly take place. All you need to do is click on send and it goes out to everybody. Um, you can also add response instructions. Again, this is the where the visual aspect of an alert kicks in. Uh, you know, uh, these response instructions, they appear as checkboxes uh, over here, but they appear as visual icons and you'll have a look at that when we get into the next slide. Uh, you know, and, and it basically, these, you know, visual represent representations of actions, uh, you know, help the recipients understand really quickly what they need to do. Uh, you know, the, the console is a web-based platform. So what that means is that you can use any browser that's available on any device, be it your smartphone, your tablet, or your laptop or desktop, to actually access it. So this allows you and gives you the mobility and flexibility to initiate an alert maybe from your desktop and carry on 
you know, evaluating an event as it unfolds on, on your mobile devices. Again, not having you sit and, you know, on, on a specific machine to see what's happening. Uh, you can, you know, also send out information to groups based on geography. This is really helpful when you've got various buildings or various campuses or various sites uh, in your organization. You know, people are dispersed off in various locations. So you can create geographic groups and just send out alerts to those groups. So anybody who's in that geographic area will then be notified. Uh, and, you know, again, really helpful when, you know, apart from organization, you know, when you've got weather or uh, other type of emergencies that you, that you want to make sure you get in touch with everyone. Uh, you know, you can, as I mentioned earlier, you can send out alerts to active directory groups. Uh, you know, this makes notifications across teams, floors, and departments really quick and easy. All right, fantastic. Uh, Mike, next slide, please. All right, so what you see over here, what the alert is going to look like once it appears uh, on, on your device, be it a desktop or a laptop or, or smartphone. Uh, you know, the alerts are designed and, you, you again, you have the flexibility uh, and, and the control over how intrusive you want these alerts to be on, on your laptops or on your desktop. You know, they can be intrusive enough to take over the whole screen or they could be controlled to just appear right in the middle uh, of the screen so that, you know, they just don't, uh, they get your attention. Again, all of this intrusiveness, the audio visual aspects of alert there to get your undivided attention of your recipients uh, when you send out a message to them. You can group alerts based on incident names. Again, really helpful when you're sending out a number of alerts so that your people don't get confused if it's a new alert or if it's a continuation of an event that already took place, you know. Uh, there's a visual representation of the response types we just spoke in the previous slide. Uh, again, looking just looking at those visual representations, your recipients can understand what they need to do. Do they need to prepare? Do they need to evacuate? Do, you need, do they need to carry out a certain set of uh, instructions, you know, uh, when, when they receive that notification. You can have users send out a simple acknowledgement or send out specific responses that you want. Like, for example, uh, if you're sending out uh, instructions, by, you, the IT team send out instructions on how to change the password, you can have somebody say, I understand, and somebody might say, well, I don't understand, I need help. So you can have those specific responses so you know exactly who needs assistance, and then you can provide that assistance to them. Uh, you know, alerts, as I mentioned earlier, for those people that may not have smartphones, uh, you can send out alerts in the form of SMSs, and that's uh, one component uh, of, of when you create an alert, uh, you know, the short message in an alert is of the same number of characters as an SMS, and that's what people see when they receive that text message. Mike, over to you. Great. Thank you so much, Mom. So now we're going to sit back and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the trends that we're seeing in mobile use, particularly in the workforce, but also in schools as well. Uh, and the reason why this is important is because there's a really important shift that's taking place uh, as far as technology, how it's impacting what people use in the office, in the school, whether it's colleges or high schools or um, and this applies as well to medical facilities as well as you would think uh, traditional offices. So it's, it's very broad based. Um, and one of the important trends that we're noticing is that people aren't just bringing mobile devices into the workforce. They're really living off of them. Uh, and Pew Research, which is one of the most premier research companies in the world, uh, has done a lot of examination of, of, of mobile use and how people are interacting with their devices. And they found out, this is really kind of amazing, but 44% of smartphone owners actually sleep with their devices next to their beds to avoid missing a call, a text message, or an update during the course of the night. And, and the reason why that's significant is because um, if you think about it, if, if you're managing an IT department or marketing or, or anything within a company, or if you're a security official within a, um, a hospital or a school, and you get that alert message that comes through to your phone saying, hey, there's a problem, there's been a water main break, or there's, um, you know, there's workforce violence or, or something to that effect, having the ability to communicate with people on a mobile device has really become critical in this day and age. And what we see is that it's, you know, it's really kind of outpaced the dependency that we used to have on desktop devices. 
we've really reached this point where even though desktops are still important for messaging and alerts, people still do read email, the mobile device has really become the quintessential and most important part now of, of what we're kind of looking at. And we can see that the numbers in terms of the percentage of people who are actively and immediately going, turning to their mobile device, it really becomes much larger the younger and younger that we go. And so this is the workforce of the future. And we're going to see this trend as we go through some of the data in the course of these slides that the younger the workforce gets, students going into the workforce, um, you know, the more dependency and the more reliance on mobile devices uh, it grows. And, and this is significant because this is going to help to dictate how you set your policies and your strategy and your thinking for how you communicate with your employees both now, five years from now, and ten years from now. So as we kind of go through this, um, another important aspect of, of the trends that we're seeing in mobile use is that a substantial majority of smartphone and mobile um, users today are using their phones to keep pace of what's going on. Um, it's not just news and events, it's news and events everywhere, local, distant, across the world. So while 70% roughly of smartphone users say they at least occasionally follow along breaking news events, you know, over a third say, hey, we do this frequently. And as you can see from the chart on the screen, uh, again, the, the numbers increase the younger and younger we get uh, in terms of people that use this more and more frequently and are trying to get information. And again, this focuses on the changing dynamic of the workforce that we have and, and of course, it's going to impact when you get into colleges, when you get into high schools, the, the younger and younger generations that keep on getting older and coming up through the ranks are using mobile devices and mobile messaging systems more and more. So you really have to adopt your messaging system for your company, your organization, your school to meet the needs of the people of your core constituents. So another set of data, which I thought was really kind of interesting, it's almost about 50-50 between owner, smartphone owners who say, eh, it's not always needed, it's important, but not always, and the ones that say, hey, I cannot live without my mobile device. And the basic reality is that it's not even just so much whether or not they can live without it or not, it's how they view their smartphones, and what they use them for. And 72% say they look at their smartphones as, as how they connect, how they connect with the world, how they connect with other people. 93% look at their smartphones as their helpful resource. They're not looking at all those text messages and alerts as being annoying. Very, very small percentage are looking at it as being annoying. Very small percentage uh, are looking at it as being a distracting thing or a burdensome thing. So this, again, helps to buttress how you set your policy in terms of how you want to communicate and the alert system that you want to deploy for your company or organization. If people are using it more and they want to use it more and they don't find it annoying, then you know this is something that could ultimately support the case for your organization to deploy. Um, we won't spend too much time on this, but I think this is another important slide because it again connects through the whole message of what it is that we're focusing on today. And that is not only do people use their phones, they depend upon them, they're looking to be informed, but guess what? They use them in emergency situations as well. And, and so over 53% of smartphone owners have said, hey, I've been in an emergency situation where my smartphone was there and helped me resolve the situation. It can be everything from a workforce, a workplace incident, a school incident to needing roadside assistance. Um, you know, people all across the board are using text messaging, they're using voice, they're using email, they're using SMS, uh, you name it, but they're also looking to their smartphone devices to help them solve emergency situations. And again, the younger the, the demographic goes, the higher the percentage of people who ultimately will turn to their phones to use it for this purpose. And so this is a great, um, a great resource then from a data perspective if you're a building owner or if you're a company and you've got a workforce that you need to connect with or a college that you're trying to reach a student body. Very, very important information. Here's another interesting um, piece of information which I think 
is sort of on the lower tier of, of, of importance, but I think does kind of connect to this trend that we're seeing and how things are evolving. Um, and that is companies spend tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars on phone systems. And what's fascinating from, from this Ring Central survey and, and Ring Central, just for disclaimer, for people who are not familiar with them, they do sort of online phone um, fax systems so that you can actually use your computer and email to fax documents instead of having to do with a machine. But they did a survey of, of, of different folks and found out that most people don't even want to use their, their office phones. They prefer to use their mobile phones. So when you think about doing company-wide paging and other kinds of things through, um, you know, through a centralized phone system or even an IP phone system, people are actually saying, hey, I'm going to do my conference call. I'm going to have my phone with me, and this is what I'm going to use when I'm in my meeting. I almost don't want a desk phone, which, um, which I think is really interesting. And you know, the percentages grow. The younger, again, people get. Uh, I actually happen to be one of those people as well. I do not rely typically on, on desk phones. And when I've worked in companies, I've actually said, I don't need it. I've got one device. I'm all set. So this is something that you'll see is sort of setting a trend for the future and something to think about when you determine what your communication strategy is going to be, particularly in emergency situations. And lastly, what we want to tie in together too is we've talked about the workplace um, whether that's your company, your hospital, or your organization, but schools are also going through these kinds of dynamics as well. We've talked about how younger and younger generations of, of people are, are determined, you know, are determined to use their mobile devices, whether they're phones, tablets, uh, laptops, what have you. So just to even kind of use a, ver a very local example for here in Virginia, uh, Fairfax County, which is a pretty large school district, uh, they started off with you know, a very small number, uh, a few hundred, then a couple of thousand, then last year it was over 10,000, and now it's in the tens of thousands as far as devices that are being registered. And schools are finding this far more economical. It's so much more economical for a school to implement a BYOD, bring your own device program, uh, than it is to actually fit everyone with a tablet or with a laptop. Um, and so it's, it's a matter of managing the security aspect and registering the devices, but it really speaks to the fact that this is something that's going on in schools and that schools need to be thinking about, wow, I've got all these students, um, you know, that are using their mobile devices in class, in the halls, they're moving around, um, you know, the annual Speak Up Research Project did a, did a much even broader study on this and found out that 58% of high school students are using these digital devices in class. Um, so that's significant. And colleges, it's also very high as well. So when you think about how mobile people have become and just the, um, the, the need to be able to connect with people as they're kind of moving in place to place, and the fact that when we try to communicate with messaging, it's not really about sending out a one-size-fits-all message that, you know, one message that reaches everybody. Now we're really focused, and this ties into the key challenges aspect, on how we can specify messages uh, based upon locations, because that's really what, what's happening, right? It's, it's not so much that it's happening to an individual because, you know, you could have 100 contacts and send out a, a, a mass SMS message. In some cases, that will work. But if you're actually dealing with a facility on a campus that has an electrical problem, a water main break, or, or, or anything, it, it could be a, a, um, a situation of a hostage situation in an adjacent building, and you need to move people out from that building. Um, you do not want to send a mass communication that is not going to hit people at that location and instead just going to hit a hundred random people who could be anywhere. So, so this is where we're going to ta start to tie in the beacon technology. Systems like intercom systems, um, you know, sirens, all those things. When you need to deliver something specific to a location, those things could actually work against you by creating a sense of panic. Um, people who are not impacted by the messages all of a sudden are distracted, they're concerned, and and then they take unpredictable action. 
And really what we're trying to do with beacon technology and the localization here is to really focus in on how we can direct the message to the right people at the right time at the right location. Um, and so with that, I think this is a perfect segue for me to go back to Monam, who's going to talk about how in-building microlocational learning works and, and the Reach Plus solution. Monam? Thank you, Mike. Um, so, you know, just touching base with what Mike just said, you know, people move around a lot uh, within our organization. And keeping that in mind, uh, you know, one of our customers recently just asked us, uh, you know, way before we had started on Beacons, you know, if it were possible to send accurate alerts uh, to locations within a, a building, such as rooms or hallways. So that started us thinking, uh, and we recognized the inadequacy of, of the GPS location technology within buildings itself. Uh, so the team began working on a solution that would provide accurate and rele relevant, you know, indoor alerting solutions. Um, so this drove our team to develop a product, you know, that allowed for alerts to be sent to very specific locations targeting a varying number of occupants in any building location such as an office hallway, uh, you know, a cafeteria or a library or a conference room. Uh, you know, so with beacons strategically placed uh, at certain locations, organizations uh, could send relevant information to people such as providing occupants of, let's say, uh, hallways or stairways, you know, uh, uh, making their way to, to for, for the exit, uh, a floor map of the nearest exit and instructions on where they, you know, where they should go to get to safety in the event something happens on their floor, for example. Or, you know, if, if, you're, if you use the school as an example or hospitals as an example, you know, alerts sent to locations such as a cafeteria or library in the event of, let's say, for example, of cafeterias when there's a new menu uh, that needs to be promoted. So, you know, anybody, uh, you know, you, sitting in, in the cafeteria would, would, would receive it because they're within the proximity of, of a beacon. Or if there's a policy change, uh, you know, with regards to the library or boring of books, you know. So, again, there their there notifications are, are sent to people's mobile phones, uh, you know, through the beacons. Because like, like, like this Mike said, you know, the new generation is more prone to pick up their mobile device and see what's happening, uh, you know, rather than wait, check an email or go and log in and, and, and you know, find out what's happening. Next slide, please, Mike. So using Reach Plus Alerts, you can configure indoor locations uh, within the Reach Plus Alerts operation interface or the console uh, based on the location that they're placed in. Uh, you know, so for example, uh, using the examples I gave before, the cafeteria can have five different beacons because of the size, uh, you know, but you can then group all of those beacons together and, and, you know, you send out one alert to the cafeteria location and it will go out to everybody within the proximity of those beacons. You can also group these indoor locations, uh, you know, based on, let's say, what floor they belong to. So let's say there's there's a fire that's broken out on, on floor three. So and then you know floor three has a number of conference rooms, but you don't know which of those conference rooms are occupied or not. So you can send out an e or, or an alert, a notification blast to those beacons on on the third floor, and will reach out to everybody who's in proximity of those beacons, and they will be notified of it. Mike, next slide, please. So you know you'd be thinking. What are these beacons? You know, what what are we talking all about? So, you know, BLE or Bluetooth low energy devices uh, are, are basically beacons that are placed at relevant locations uh, within a building. Mobile devices such as tablets and smartphones running the Reach Plus client, uh, you know, are are, are able to send lo location information to the Reach Plus server. Uh, you know, this information then lets Reach Plus know of the rooms varying number of comp, uh, you know occupants. The cafeteria's number of occupants change continuously. Libraries are people are coming in and out of it at any given time. And then you know this basically allows the alert senders to send out loca location relevant information uh, to those present as well as those entering the location during a given time frame. Mike, over to you. Great. Thanks, Mark. So in conclusion, just to kind of tie up before we um, you know, get to a couple of things. I think one of the key things that we always want to remember here 
is that with this ability to target indoor locations, um, it's really changed the dynamic and, and the way that emergency alerts and, and these and sort of notifications that companies have been trying to send out uh, are now sent. And and I think as as Monum has touched on, you can you can imagine a number of different scenarios uh, how this could be applicable to your company. It's not something that is is strictly a hospital-based solution or a school-based solution. Uh, it really transcends that because. You can have occupants in a conference room or a situation when you need to send out something that's time critical to a nurse's station in a hospital. Um, or it could be, I mean, with the size and scope of schools, uh, it could impact a wing of a building in a school. So, so really what it comes down to is indoor learning really helps you to overcome the challenges of mass messaging. It allows you to send these alerts to specific locations, target devices, and then ultimately, you know, verify these messages have been received, um, you know, that people are taking the appropriate action. Uh, and, you know, in a lot of cases, you're making decision making go faster, time is being saved, money is ultimately being saved. But really the most important thing, it's about human life, it's about safety. And, and I think that's the other key aspect to this that we want to make sure everyone understands the value when you, when you kind of look at the total aspect here. So um, before we jump into the Q&A, do you want to make sure that, that you guys understand um, what's available to you? Reach Plus has is, is, is made this great offer in, in that you can demo their solution completely, um, you know, on your own, uh, contact them through, you know, this number will provide all this information as well in, in the follow-up email. Uh, that goes out, and it'll be in the slide deck that you'll get. Um, reach out to them, reach out to Monum, reach out to the team, um, either through email or by phone, and they can get you all set up so that you can actually start getting in there and, and testing this, looking through the notifications, the target messaging, how you can start to get through all of this. The beacons are obviously a separate piece to the, um, to the puzzle, but if you're interested in that, uh, talk to them about that as well, because that's another uh, important aspect um, to the Total Reach Plus solution that I think you'll find has incredible value. And so without further ado, I mean, we're, we're a little short on time, so I, I want to be sensitive to everybody's time, And but we do have a few questions that came in. Uh, again, if we don't get to your specific question, we are going to reach back out to you. So, so Mona, for you, um, let, me, uh, let me just sort of go through the questions here and um, so, someone, so people are wondering about the technology that Beacons use, um, what sort of the platform, um, if you could explain that a little bit, that would be helpful. Sure. Uh, great question. Uh, you know, so the Beacons use, uh, as, as I mentioned in the presentation also, you know, use Bluetooth Low Energy or BLE for communication. Uh, you know, the underlying uh, technology standard that allows for all of this happen uh, is Apple's iBeacon technology. Okay? Yeah, and and, what, and just explain what is the iBeacon technology if people are, I, I know Apple's talked a little bit about that recently. Right. But, but just so the, the term, the, the term iBeacon and Beacon are often used interchangeably. Uh, you know, iBeacon is the name of Apple's technology standard, uh, which allows mobile apps, again, these mobile apps could be running uh, on both iOS and Android devices. Uh, to listen for, for, for signals from beacons in the physical world uh, and, and react accordingly. Uh, so basically, in essence, you know, the iBeacon technology allows mobile applications to understand their position on a micro-local scale uh, and, and deliver hyper-contextual you know, content uh, to users based on, uh, on their location. Uh, again, as I said earlier, the underlying communication technology is, is, is BLE or Bluetooth Low Energy. Okay, great. No, it's very helpful. Um, so let me just scroll through and, and look at the next question. So when it comes to the, the product itself um, and, and sort of the, the beacons uh, as well, uh, people are kind of wondering if this is a, a separate piece of hardware. How does this sort of integrate within the, the solution that you guys have? All right, perfect. Well, well the beacons are, are purchased separately because we kept this in mind that, you know, this is a piece of hardware. There might be organizations they may not want to use it, so we don't want to enforce it on someone. Uh, so you know, we can you know provide you these you know these these beacons based on your requirements, or you could get those iBeacon compatible beacons of your choice and use them with uh, Reach Plus. 
Uh, we recommend Estimote and Sensoros, uh, you know, as we've thoroughly tested them, and that's something that we use it with during the development of this technology for us. Uh, however, as I mentioned earlier, any iBeacon compatible uh, beacon, you know, okay, will work. It, it, it can work also. Okay, great. So they're not locked into one particular thing. They can use different types of devices, and it'll it'll all work within the Reach Plus solution. Exactly. Great. Um, okay. And I think I know we're a little bit over time, so let me just take uh, take one more question. And I think this has to do with the solution and in terms of how it gets installed and implemented. It's um, does it have to be installed on site or can it be hosted? And I and, and that's a very common question. I think a lot of people want to know. Right. You know, can can this be hosted? What what what's the basic? True. So, so yeah, you're right. You know, this is this is with with the ever evolving situations and people wanting to be careful about you know, business continuity and disaster recovery. So you, we have the option where our solution can be, you know, installed on-site, uh, on-premise by, by, by the organizations themselves, or they could install it on any cloud servers that they have, or it could be hosted for them also. Again, uh, you know, the options are available. There is, the best thing is there is no difference in the solution wherever it is, you know, installed. You get the same full featured solution wherever you want to get installed and start using it. Okay, great. And, and I know we're, we're a little bit over time, so if anyone, if we didn't get to your specific question, we, we apologize. It's uh, We want to be mindful of everyone's time as well. And, and if you've asked a question, we'll certainly, Monum and the team will certainly reach back out to you. Um, hey, Monum, I want to thank you for your time and uh, the time that you spent today and kind of going through the technology and everything. Uh, did you have anything that you wanted to close with or any kind of thought that you wanted to leave the audience with uh, before we wrap up? No, I think, you know, well, okay, thank you very much. I think this is, was, it was a great opportunity. It was great, uh, you know, presenting uh, Reach Plus Alerts as briefly as we could in the time that was allotted uh, to, to everybody. Uh, and then, you know, I, I think, you know, with, with the current evolving situations, the sort of situations that happen in everyday organizations, uh, you know, getting a notification solution is something that's very vital. And I think, you know, everybody should give us a call and give us an opportunity to see what we can do for you. Great. Excellent. So on that note, we'll, we'll conclude things. And, uh, and as I mentioned at the start of the event, we, we have been recording this. We'll send out an email to everybody. So you will get the slide deck. You will get a link to the video. And uh, I just want to thank you all for taking the time to join us today. We really appreciate it. We know your time is valuable. And, and we hope that you'll you'll take a chance and, and reach out to Monum and his team uh, to, to at least demo the solution and, and try it out. It, it is very user friendly. And I think you've, as you've seen from a lot of the different uh, you know, screens and images. Uh, it's it's got a very intuitive feel to it that I, I think is very important um, because we deal with so many complex complicated things in our day to day. Uh, to actually have something this robust uh, be so intuitive is is a real benefit. So, anyhow, thank you all. This concludes today's presentation, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Bye bye.